all, we, we are very sorry for the way we apologize. So we are very pleased and it's our honor to be discussing such a very important topic, engineering ethics. Uh, so let me introduce myself and my teammates real quick. First of all, we are GMT, as we call ourselves. My name is Ahmed Nada. I'm Nancy. I'm him. I'm Hamlet. I'm As I mentioned, we are very pleased to be discussing engineering ethics, and hopefully this will take longer than 25 minutes. So, in 1985, a huge disaster has struck the engineering world. In Bhopal City, India, over 30, 30,000 people were choked to death in their sleep because of a poisonous gas leak in a pesticide factory. Managers at the factory say that all of this happened because of someone manipulated the, the, the pipes. So, is that really what happened? Is that the truth? We will find out as the presentation goes on. So, as we can see in the video, this, this horrible disaster and the, the death and all this stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's very sad. So, in this presentation, we'll be tackling four main points. First, what engineering ethics is, its origin and its history. And second, what the code of ethics basically contains. And third, we as engineers will learn together how to be ethical engineers through discussing some engineering disasters in history. And finally, we will be talking about whistleblowing and uh, whistleblowing and uh, plagiarism as they are two controversial ethical issues. So now leaving you with Nancy to discuss what engineering ethics is to be done.
So this, the responsibility is engineer. That's exactly what the code of ethics tackles. As you can see here in the IEEE code of ethics. Um, so in number one, accept responsibility. Number two, avoid real or perceived uh, uh, conflict of interest. Be honest, reject bribery. Uh, like, uh, what, uh, avoid injuring others. So uh, what the code of ethics does is that it, is, it compels engineers to commit to their responsibilities uh, but, uh, through it. What happens if someone does not follow these rules? So it's not illegal not to follow them. However, if something bad happens, if, it ca if they cause any damage by not committing to these rules, uh, they, could, they could subject themselves to losing their license and, or, and their membership. So if, what do we get from all this? Engineers commit to their responsibilities by the means of the code of ethics, all for the sake of the, the all for the sake of the prosperity of the technological system. Now we're going to talk about uh, past engineering incidents. Hemp will shed some light on the past incidents that we talked about. A wise person once said. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And this is exactly why we have to discuss engineering disasters and engineering mistakes that happened by people before us. And uh, in order to learn about how to be more ethical engineers. And when we talk about engineering disasters, we can't forget about the Bhutal gas tragedy, which happened in 1984. And it was the worst industrial disaster to ever happen in the history of the world. Now, um, what happened is that in the 70s, uh, an American company called Union Carbide teamed up with the Indian government to form a fertilizer company in India. And the first problem is that this the fertilizer company was built next to the city of half a million people. And uh, this company used poison chemicals, so this was a bad decision since the very beginning. The second problem is that the security protocols in this factory were much worse than the security protocols of standard US factories. Um, and, uh, and so it led to disaster later on. Now, uh, while workers were cleaning the pipes, the water uh, from the cleaning reacted with, uh, reacted with the gas inside the pipes to create a poisonous gas called MRC, which is one of the most poisonous gases in the world. And um, uh, this gas kept leaking out of the water pipes, and the security measurements were supposed to detect and neutralize this gas, but they were all not working. So there were um, uh, cooling uh, pipes with cooling instruments and um, uh, security valves, and all of these valves were not working. So in the end, the gas kept leaking for over two hours. And all of these um, uh, mistakes led to disaster. And even the security, um, and uh, even the measuring instruments that were supposed to detect this uh, uh, level of gas were not working. And so engineers failed to take the proper uh, safety precautions. After that, 42 tons of poisonous MIC gas were uh, leaked out of the factory and seeped into a city of innocent people. Uh, people were awakened from their sleep by this poisonous gas and they rushed out to the streets and they choked to death. And so over 2,500 people died in that first night. So in under eight hours, more people and more people died. Um, the total death toll of this uh, incident is estimated to be over 30,000 deaths. And even more people suffer from chronic illnesses such as heart failures, respiratory illnesses, um, uh, and many people went blind. And even children born in Nepal at this time face twice the risk of death as children born elsewhere. Now, uh, the company responsible for this accident, which is Union Carbide, should have taken responsibility for this disaster. However, they claim that uh, they were subject to sabotage and manipulation of the pipes, and so uh, they 
claimed that they weren't responsible. However, after that, it turned out that they were responsible and they had to pay $470 million as compensation to the families who lost their lives. And all of this, uh, all of this disaster and catastrophe shows you how awful engineering disasters and engineering mistakes can be and how important it is for engineers to be ethical in their work. Because even the slightest mistake and carelessness or negligence or lack of maintenance can cost thousands of people their lives. And now I will leave you with a clip who will uh, talk about more uh, significant engineering disasters. So now I am going to tackle two important, uh, two important uh, incidents that, that change the whole physical engineering world. First was the space shuttle Chromium. It was 1973 when it supposed that uh, Chromium uh, packed uh, from the Earth to the space, uh, from the space to the Earth. What's happened? What's happened? Shuttle Chromium was completely exploded in space, and all the seven astronauts on uh, Columbia were dead. What exactly happened that day? What is the reasons of this uh, failure and horrible uh, incident? First of all, there was an engineer that noticed before launching that there was a piece of foam stuck, stuck between the, uh, uh, the wing, the left wing, and the body of the shot. So the engineer noticed, uh, noticed the manager that there is a, a big failure. Uh, but, however, the manager refused to stop launching. For as he expressed a silly thing, they refused. And the engineer was afraid of repeating uh, his request because he has a job and he, he can't uh, lose it. He is afraid of losing it. So after launching and while Colombia was back into the Earth, it exploded and the seven astronauts were killed. So if there was a wise management, if there was an ethical environment that gave the engineer the right to express his fears without, without fearing or without being afraid, maybe, maybe those astronauts are living with us. And now let's move quickly to another, another incident, Challenger. Challenger is one of the most massive tracks. However, it's considered one of its big disasters and big failures. What's happened? Uh, before launching, uh, the Challenger was supposed to launch uh, at, uh, at January 1886. But what happened? Uh, it was a cold day and the engineer was worried about the integrity of welding on the road. So they told the manager, but uh, their concerns and their uh, worries were not taken into consideration. The manager and engineer were too impatient to wait, and their desire for launch won. And after exactly 73 seconds, as we will see now, the shuttle exploded. And when it exploded, the seven astronauts were killed. We will now see how, how this was a, a big disaster. And, and what makes things worse is that, as can you see, there was a live broadcast. Imagine that, imagine that the situation of a family that saw her, her, uh, their children die in front of them and burn in space. Imagine the situation of a, a, a husband and that he knows that her wife never back again to him. All of this, all of this, why? Because unethical engineering decisions. Here now we will see the explosion. The explosion will happen. There is an explosion and the disaster happens. And now let's get rid of all this tragedy and we will go to talk about uh, some engineering issues, which is the flash prison and the whistleblowing with my friend. Okay, so now we will talk about plagiarism. Plagiarism is taking someone else's work and presenting it as yours. So the problem with plagiarism is that it discredits the work of the engineer presenting this material and it makes you question his truthfulness and his honesty. So as you see now, plagiarism is dealt with one of the following ways. Using another writer's words without proper citation or using another writer's ideas without proper citation. 
and using another writer's words without citing your source but responding <laughs> using the exact words of printed source without quotation marks. And the fourth, well, the fourth thing is borrowing the structure of another author's phrases or sentences without crediting the author from whom he wrote. So what we see now is an example of plagiarism. I took Dr. Ahmed Wood's slides and I presented them as if they were mine. I presented this material as if it was my material. But the proper way to cite those slides is by actually writing the reference line here. It is supposed to be in the reference page, but we have to put it in to just make sure you see it for them. So now switching from plagiarism to the one which is the most controversial issue in the engineering profession, whistleblowing. So what is whistleblowing? Whistleblowing is simply reporting some legal or moral corruptions to the people in charge. And those people in charge are the ones supposed to take an action to fix those corruptions. And now we have an example about whistleblowing. It's about an engineer called Carl Houston. Carl Houston was a welding supervisor at a nuclear facility in uh, working for Stone and Web. Okay, back to our presentation. So, Carl Houston. Carl Houston was a welding supervisor for Stolen Weber in a nuclear facility. So when he was supervising this project, he found that the proper welding procedures were going, the use of raw materials, and the welders were on train, and lastly, the whole situation was dangerous. So what he did is that he reported this, uh, this corruption, this, this to the manager of Stolen Weber. But unfortunately, the, the manager of Stolen Weber ignored him. So he insisted on doing his job. So he also threatened to write to the Stone and Weber headquarters. But then he got fired with trumped up charges. So still he insisted on doing his job. He wrote to the US Congress and he wrote to some senators. And they finally prompted the Atomic, atomic, atomic Energy Convention to investigate this project and finally they proved that his allegations were right. So without Carl Houston doing his work, without him insisting on reporting those corruptions, those people and this project would have been would have been in a verge on a nuclear disaster. So finally Ahmed will conclude our presentation. Okay. Now we come down to the most important question. What do we conclude from all of this? Well, we can conclude that mistakes by the engineering profession can lead to some deadly consequences. We as engineers should have the morals and responsibility to expose any questionable action that could lead to any unsafe product or service that could harm someone or affect negatively the public lives or the balance of the environment. We do have to respect the code of ethics as it's this thing that gives this engineering profession its greatness. Those engineers, we have, I'm sorry to call them engineers, those ignorance we have mentioned before who caused all of these disasters, they had the opportunity, like, like, like Bhopal disaster or Tay bridge collapse, they could have prevented it, but they didn't, because they didn't have the moral obligations to actually stop it and like take a step forward and actually stop it. But on the other side, the bright side, an engineer like Carl Houston who did take an action, who didn't hesitate to report any suspicious practice, leading him to lose his job in return, but at the end, he went down in history as a great engineer. So, what I want to say is, we as engineers, we are humans, we do make mistakes, but we still have to respect the code of ethics, because a little bit of, a little bit of care, a little bit of honesty could save many lives. Thank you.